Hey now, welcome to the City Off Campus podcast with your two favorite hosts, Sammy Sommerfeld and Jack McFarland. Today's guest is Iowa football wide receiver and return man, Charlie Jones. How's everything going with you today? Everything's been great, man. Just a couple more days before we get back into it. Love it. So we'll definitely be firing off some questions going to this season and camp and all that stuff. But I want to bring it back to high school to start the interview, which is I heard you played a lot of slot in high school, but I also have heard you were a pretty good cornerback. So I wanted to ask you, like, going into college football, why do you want to focus on being a wide receiver over being on the defensive side of the ball? Uh, well, back in high school, we uh, we ran the triple option, so it was kind of tough to be a to be a receiver. So slot was more like t- typically like a running back in that offense. Um, and then yeah, like you said, I played a lot of corner. Um, actually, my sophomore year, I pretty much just played corner. Um, but offense was always you know where I felt most comfortable. Um, it was just harder to get recruited as. Um, as a receiver, just because we, we threw the ball so so little out there. Um, but, yeah, I knew, like, moving forward for college, like, defense is fun, but, you know, I, I'm not really a defensive player. And, you know, I just feel more comfortable as a receiver. It's, I think it's more fun personally. Um, but, yeah, it was, just, it was just tough. So, like, playing corner kind of gave me that that ability to get recruited a little bit more. So, so how much – I mean, just be honest, like, how much did you hate – running the triple option offense by the time you were a senior in high school? <laughs> um, it had its pros and cons. I mean, it was – like I said, if I played quarterback, it would have been, like, the greatest offense ever. But, like, <laughs> for, like, a running quarterback, you know. Right. Um, but, like, yeah, as a receiver, I mean, geez, it, it, it was tough. Like, it was frustrating at times. But, like, you know, when we did throw the ball, it was, like, wide open. So, it was, like – you're basically going to score like every time you throw the ball, really. Like how um, many, you, you get like how not, many, like 10 passing plays a game, maybe at most. I mean, yeah. Like I think my junior year, I had like 10 receptions on the year. <laughs> um, and like my senior, it was like 20. So like, yeah, like not for me, like not many. But I mean, you touch the ball as like a running back, like a bunch. I right? Mean, yeah, you're just you're you're just a grunt. You're just the dive bag getting the first option, and getting smoked instead of running around and catching a pass. I mean, getting like smoked. Said, yeah. Pros and cons. Yeah. So going into recruiting and stuff like that, can you right, tell us right. a little bit about how you ended up at Buffalo originally and what that recruiting process was like for you and how you made your decision to go there? Yes. Yeah, so um, basically. Um, after my junior season is when recruiting started to pick up a little bit. Um, and I was getting like schools like, like Buffalo, um, like boss, like kind of max schools. Um, I got North coast state, um, and a couple others like that. Um, and I was kind of just waiting. I was like, you know what? I got my senior season coming up. Um, you know, hopefully I get a power five or something like that. Um, so I was just kind of pushing the process. Um, and then after my senior season, I wasn't getting anything, um, you know, which was a little bit frustrating. Uh, so I just – I couldn't decide. Um, you know, I just kept pushing it back, and schools were basically filling up spots, um, taking other guys uh, at receiver. Um, it really came to Buffalo and Notre Dame. Um, and this was like the day before signing day. And I was like, man, like, I have no idea what I want to do. Um, so I figured, you know, Buffalo, like, you know, they're in the MAC. You know, it, it is a good conference. Um, at the time, they weren't doing that well. And I was like, you know what, I want to be a part of a team that's going to, you know, turn around. Um, so I went with them. And, you know, my second year there, we're in the MAC championship. Um, so, you know, the program really kind of turned around. And after that, they've had some good success. Um, but, yeah, it was – it was interesting. It was it was confusing. It was frustrating. It was it was a tough you know couple months. So when you were in that process of picking, did you kind of know you had the capabilities of playing at the Power Five level? Like, did you kind of believe in yourself then that like you didn't see yourself as a MAC player 
for like was that kind of where you were at um, and then it was kind of like the offers that were there you kind of took the best offer available yeah i mean you know not hating on the mac at all i mean the, the mac has you know unbelievable competition every week but you know i always thought you know i've always believed in you know what i can do um and you know i believe that i can play with the best of the best um so that was a little bit frustrating that you know other people didn't see it that way um but i knew you know just that was out of my control at that time. Um, and what I could do is just pick the best place um, for me um, where I could grow the most, um, get the most exposure, um, and just, you know, come in and, and work hard and, you know, whatever happens, happens. So then going into after that season, after you're in the MAC championship, you kind of achieved your goal of being in a program that turned around. What led to you wanting to transferring and what was the transfer process like? And what led to you walking on at okay. Iowa? Um, yeah, so um, that whole transfer process was was tough, dude. Um, I, towards the end of my season, um, I was kind of feeling, you know, like I want to, you know, I, I've, I've made um, a couple plays. I've kind of, you know, been able to put a little bit of a tape together to, to uh, maybe go get a power five school like Iowa. Um, and when the time came after the MAC championship, I uh, went in for an MRI on my shoulder and I ended up having a torn labrum. Um, so I got surgery uh, that, that January. Um, and then that's right around when I entered the transfer portal. Um, and I, I entered pretty late, which is always tough because, you know, scholarships at that point aren't, aren't really available. And I was coming off of uh, surgery. Um, so, you know, I wasn't too appealing to, uh, to programs, um, in the power five basically. Um, so yeah, it, it was, it was tough, dude. Like I went in the portal with like no idea what I was doing. Just like kind of, you know, I believe in myself. Like I know like what I'm capable of doing, like my work ethic, um, and just kind of hoping someone would take a chance on me. Um, and I, you know, I emailed like, like the whole like damn near the whole country dude like trying to just get a get a spot um how many responses uh, did you get if you if you email the whole country it had to have been like cold cold email like that's tough and then you were probably getting cold shouldered a lot just because that's the nature of it yeah and like a lot of it like a lot of the um websites like you go on and it's kind of just like one email for everyone which is tough so like i'm not even like half of those probably didn't even get read um you know so um i mean it wasn't a whole kind i mean like right i yeah. emailed like a ton but like you know i did what i could so i wanted uh, to ask I, I was just gonna ask like at what age did you start returning whether it was kick punts whatever and what inspired you or what like drew you to wanting to be a returner uh yeah so uh, I started returning, um, I think my first year was my freshman year of high school. Um, I was doing both kick and punt. And then, um, you know, I did that all throughout high school. Um, and then when I got to Buffalo, I was, I was just a kick returner. Um, so last, last season at Iowa was my first year punt returning. Um, you know, that's, all, that's always been something like, you know, interesting to me, you know, it's such an electric, like, playing football like um you know it's definitely tough like punt return is like you know it's just you back there and you know it is a little bit stressful but you know like you know i I love that kind of like situation where like pressure's on um and plus like you know you make a big play like it could it really changes the game um so you know it's always been something that i'm super interested in hopefully this year i'll be i'll be able to do both kick and punt returns yeah, I mean, being a Bears fan, last season just comes to mind, and they had absolutely negative of a punt return game, and it, you could tell that the offense just did not have the best field position at times. And punt returns are the most electric play in sports because oh, it is definitely. you against the entire wall of people coming down to cover you. You make right. one guy, even just one guy miss, you could get 10, 15 yards. That helps field position so much. But there's plenty of times where you get a high boot and they're just like, look, we don't want this kid to return it. What's the weirdest thing someone has said to you while you're waiting for the ball to come in on a fair catch? <laughs> oh, man. Um, that's actually a great question. 
honestly, like, I I wouldn't even know just because like there's like it everything happens so fast. It's almost like you kind of just like black out for a quick second, like where you're just so focused on just like especially like if it's a pooch situation where like you're near the end zone. And you're just under there just trying to catch that ball, like, just to catch it and not get any yards, like, just fair catch. Um, the adrenaline kind of just takes over, and I really just have no idea what anyone's saying. People are always saying stuff, though. Like, they come past you, they, like, tap you on the hip or whatever, and they're talking, and you're just kind of like, you know what? Like, I am I can't even hear you. Like, I'm not even listening. Um, so, I, going uh, a little deeper, like, you you originally started with like kick returning at Buffalo, like you said, and then you've now progressed into punt returning and you want to do both. Kind of talk about the differences and and how your mentality goes into like a kick return or a punt return. And obviously with the kick return, you have 10 guys, nine guys in front of you blocking, right. obviously. But with punt, you're just hoping for a, a lane or somewhere. So like what goes into your mind before each of those and how, how does that play out? Yeah, so uh, kick return is is – totally different i mean you catch the ball you got all your guys in front of you you know um i mean it everyone's running full speed which is you know kind of tough but um you know you you know you got guys like right in front of you and you're gonna get like 15 yards like without anyone touching you um so that's a whole different game like you know that one it, it once you get to those guys like the whole like and like happens so fast where you're like you got it you're either in there or like you're getting smacked um, so that, that is a really like, uh, it's totally different from palm, palm return. You go back there and like, for me, like for both kick and palm return, I go back there and I'm like, you know what? Like I'm going to score like every time this ball is punted, like, and that's kind of my mentality. Um, you know, I don't really like to fair catch, you know, obviously if it's a situation where, you know, we need just the ball, like then, uh, you know, I'm, I'm for the fair catch or someone's right in my face. I'm a fair catch it. But other than that, you know, I'm going into it like, you know what, this kid's running full speed at me. It's typically just one kid, like, in your face. Um, he's got no idea where I'm going to go. I can go left. I can go right. He doesn't know, if, you know, if I'm a fair catch it. So I just go out there and I'm like, you know what, like, I'm going to push this as far as I possibly can. Um, and, you know, if I if I see, like, a split second, I'm going to catch it and I'm going to try to make a move. And then after that, you know, it's just, you know, get what you can get. Because once you make the first – guy or two miss you know it's pretty much open so in moments like that like when you've scored a touchdown in a game before on a return what's going through your head once you kind of make the first one or two guys miss is it more like i just got to keep going like i gotta juke this guy shake this guy off or whatever or is it just mm -hmm. like you kind of black out and you're just running to the end zone um at that point it's like kind of instinct just takes over like um you know, obviously you're trying to, you know, read it, but, you know, everything is just happening so fast. Like there's just so many guys in such a small area where it's like, dude, like your instincts just like kind of just take over and you start kind of just making moves. Um, but like once you get past that second level and you're kind of on like the, the bigger guys, like, you know, the personal protectors, then it's like, you know, it's game on. Like I get past this next guy, like I'm, I'm taking it back. Um, so it, it, it is such an electric play, bro. And it really does get everyone going, like um, just such a spark in a game. So this year with fans coming back to Kinnick, if you score a touchdown at Kinnick this year, which will hopefully happen, do you have any touchdown celebrations in <laughs> mind with teammates or in your head? Have you been planning anything or um, any ideas there? You know, I'm not a big, I'm not a big celebration guy. Um, you know, I'll, I'll celebrate with my, uh, with my teammates and um, it's, it's kind of, you know, in that atmosphere, especially like, you know, I still haven't played in front of a crowd like Kinnick yet. Um, I think the most I've played in front of is like 25,000. So like I'm nowhere near that, that atmosphere yet. And I'm, I'm really excited to be out there this year. Um, but you know, it kind of just like emotions kind of take over, like, you always kind of go on and you're like, all right, you know, I want to do this, you know, whatever. Like you kind of got a little plan going, but then once you score, like, it's just like, everything's out the window and you're kind of just like in the moment, you know, whatever happens, happens. Um, you know, I'm, I, I, I'm positive. I won't be doing any TikTok dances or anything crazy <laughs> like that, but. You now, know. is there a wide receiver 
in the receiving room who has been talking about doing any TikTok <laughs> dances next year or has anything <laughs> planned in the future? Um, <clears throat> we got a couple guys that are big on TikTok. Um, <laughs> but uh, uh, no, I don't know. We, um, you know, we, we all got kind of got handshakes and stuff, but, you know, we don't have any choreographed uh, TikTok t- uh, dances for the season. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, we'll see. Uh, I think, uh, I think uh, hopefully we're, we're in the end zone and get that opportunity a bunch, but you know, I don't know uh, what the celebrations are going to look like. If, if there were, who, who, if you can say who out of the wide <laughs> receiving room, who would be the TikTok dancer in the end zone? If you had to pick oh, one. Oh man. I don't know if I can expose my boy like yeah. that, dude. Uh, I feel like you kind of got, got a feel of who it might be. But uh, I don't know if I could put him on the spot like that. <laughs> so one, one thing I kind of just want to go back to is punt returning. So a lot of positions kind of like worry about, oh, I don't want this to happen on film. Like a mm. tackle doesn't want to get beat wide or something. With mm. you and punt returning, let's say you, you break past that second level and you're at the personal protectors. There's also the punter. Does it ever – for a sl- like slight second, you're like, dude – I don't want this guy to tackle me of all the people. Like, I don't want um, this. To, I don't want this to be on film. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that would, um, you know, it'd be tough to, to have one guy left and, and end up getting tackled. Usually if you got the punter left, you, you still have a little bit of room. We lose him. Yeah. Media com, Jack. Media com. Mother fucking media com i would tweet at them but i'm already blocked sam your turn no. actually no i got the yeah, no I, got the, I thought the city's blocked I yeah yeah blocked. the city well i was thinking of Jack going uh, around saying that he's blocked trying I, to build the hype around well him. i did get it's, i it's did get blocked all right fair we got blocked oh we lost charlie guys charlie just didn't want to be here i'm just kidding he just took it to the house i don't know Damn, that stinks. We'll bring him back. Well, there is one punter I know of off the top of my head, but he's not there anymore. He's the Penn State guy, but he uh, yeah. he got chirped out of football because he was a bigger boy, and he had, like, an eating disorder. I swear to God, it was Oof. really a sad story. But like That's tough. Yeah, that guy, that guy laid some licks. I think he could have got some pro looks just because he had, like, a Sebastian Janikowski build, maybe a little pudgier. But definitely had a boot. Yeah. I think you can make a good punter, I think. Me? You have the build, yeah. No, I don't have the leg. I don't have the flexibility to get the leg up high. I'd be I a really you, good long snapper. I heard you do snapper. a lot of, like, Pilates and yoga. I heard, like, that's what no, you No, no, that's not that's not me. That's that's Noah Flake-Fenske. But, <laughs> um, no, I would make a great long snapper. And I think if hey, I like, hey hey don't underestimate the long snapper. I'm not. I, I'm not. I know. I know some long snappers. I do too. Man. I was roommates with the fastest long snapper in the nation. I yeah, know an all American long snapper. Well, mine was faster. Recruit. Mine was faster. Recruit. Mine was faster. And hey, we had our boy Patrick Manley on the pod. Like, long yeah. snapping's a serious game. I get it. I, I'm saying don't if, underestimate the skill set. If you need to be I had put my mind to long snapping from a young age, I could be somewhere right now long snapping. I'd be great for that. Oh. I honestly think I'd be a great long snapper. I seriously, I think I would be great. They're like okay. glue guys. So, so I think what you should do is train all summer to long snap and walk on. I think I'd be pretty good. Like, swear to God, I think if you gave me maybe a month or two, I could have a decent-looking punt snap, 100%. Okay. Well, now we got Charlie back. Yeah, my phone did the uh, the temperature thing. It got too hot outside. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Dude, where did that happen to me? Oh, That's my God. Pod, it's, Jack. Dude, it's the it, worst. I think – I th- th- Sam, I think it was when we were at the baseball game. I think my phone just – because we were like – directly in the sun or something oh. i don't know what happened but yeah i think that was the last time it happened dude that's the worst oh, i actually dude, and it always happens at the worst time too 
I literally, when I was younger, I put my, I think I, I put my iPod touch into the freezer because it said that. And I was like, this is the only <laughs> way I could fix it. And I put it in there for like 20 seconds. Swear to God. Didn't work. That's hilarious. Was not, was not a fix. But what yeah, I, I wouldn't recommend that. <laughs> what I asked before you, you disconnected, no problem, was are, are there any punters in the Big Ten, like off the top of your head from any school, you don't have to know the name. I don't expect you to, but mm. that you know, like you've seen on film, are generous with the way they throw their body around on a punt or a kick. Oof. Um, honestly, like, not that I've seen really. Uh, just you know, this is my first uh, season doing it. You now, yeah. and I haven't seen anyone really. Uh, kind of get to that point where they had to like make that tackle at least not last year um so i'm still kind of new to it so no i, I not off the top of my head would i know of anyone that you know is really uh taking people out uh, well, well then a quick follow-up to that is is hypothetical you get past second level in practice is tory taylor allowed to level you if, if it gets to that <laughs> point uh no tory is not allowed to hit me um that's usually we, I, I i don't get that like how how is tory supposed to get better you you would think that uh you know maybe it'd be some good practice but no uh we have never <laughs> been in that situation where uh where tory has had to take me out tory's my roommate uh i don't know if uh <laughs> i don't know if he'd be if he'd be laying me out What's it like for you to practice and train with a guy who's, you know, one of the best punters in college football and getting to receive punts from him all the time? You know, I went to the spring practice with our friend Tommy Blasberg. Shout Tommy. out Tommy. Tommy. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it was cool just seeing you guys, you know, practice and everything. But what's it like training with a guy like that where you get to practice with a legit guy every day? Yeah, dude. Um you know, especially toward being one of my really close friends and my roommate, um, it gives me just that that advantage. Like all summer, like I just get to catch a punt from Tori. Like we just get to work on it. Like it's great practice for him. It's great practice for me. And like being in practice, you know, just him giving me like punts that I typically won't see in the game. Um, just because like this kid is he's he's really unbelievable and you know it was his first year playing american football and he's he's doing just so well um you know so like that kind of practice like it just makes me so much better um you know it makes the whole you know tory's whole punt team better and you know the whole punt return unit um so much better just getting that kind of exposure every day at practice but yeah it it it's definitely a, a big edge for us how many times uh, while you've been living with Tori or just at practice with Tori or just even at a game with Tori, has he asked you on the side just a random question about the game of football? Because you've said one year of American football, I, and he doesn't, like, he, he punts. So he's not, like, on offense or defense. He doesn't necessarily have to, like, sit there and learn a ton yeah. about those sides of the game. Like, does he ever come up to you those types of questions, or does he just try to keep that to himself and then maybe ask you or a coach later on? No, he's, he's pretty open about that. Um, I wouldn't say, you know, I don't – game days, I don't really um, spend a lot of time with him just because, you know, I'll be um, more with the receivers. Um, so, I, I, I don't really get to hear that part of it. But, you know, he's – like like I said, he is, this is his first year. Um, he's definitely learning a lot. Um, and he's pretty open about, you know, things that he doesn't know. Um, he's – you know, other positions he's always trying to learn, you know, like, what you know, what is this? You know, what does that do? Um and, you know, he's, he's kind of just being a student of the game. Um, yep. I got just being a student of the game. Um, and I wanted to know, what was it like for you to go from a walk-on player to earning a scholarship um, earlier this year? Yeah. What did that mean yes. for you? Um, you know, obviously uh, coming in as a walk-on, um, especially after coming, uh, you know, at Buffalo, I was on scholarship. Um, and, you know, I, I knew the situation. It was, it was late. Um, and, you know, like I said earlier, I was coming off uh, surgery. So I knew that scholarship uh, wasn't really going to be on the table. Um, but, um, you know, like I said earlier, like I, I believe in myself, um, you know, a hundred percent, I believe what I can do. So, you know, I knew walking on, um, you know, wasn't preferred um to be that way but um if that's the only opportunity I had then you know I'm gonna do it um and so my mentality coming in was just you know what I'm gonna I'm gonna 
outwork everybody. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to work hard every single day, put in the extra time. Um, and the, the ultimate goal was never to, uh, get a scholarship. That was just, you know, a goal along the way, um, you know, helps my parents out financially. Um, yeah, but you know, I have, I have higher goals than that. So just cause you know, I, I did end up getting the scholarship, you know, it doesn't mean, you know, the work's done or, mm -hmm. you know, I still have more that I want to accomplish. Um, and higher goals above that, but, you know, getting a scholarship was nice uh, to be recognized for, you know, hard work and, you know, just doing, doing, um, doing everything every day that I possibly can. Yeah. What are some of your overarching goals for your career at Iowa that's going to continue? And what are your careers for this season as you train this off season? Um, you know, obviously, uh, you know, we want to, we as well as we possibly can as a team we want to we want to win the big 10 championship we want to you know be a part of the playoffs um you know um we got a lot of team goals a lot of guys coming back um mm -hmm. you know we feel really good about our team this year um so as a group we got you know we got uh, high standards we work hard um you know so we have a lot of goals you know personally um you know I'm not going to sit here and say, you know, I got all these things that I, you know, all these awards, you know, that just comes with hard work and that's part of being a team player. Um, obviously I want to, I want to play at the next level and, um, you know, just that, like I said, that comes with, you know, being a, being a team player, working hard with the team, um, you know, just coming in every day with that mindset, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to leave it all out here for the day. So, you know, I'm ready for tomorrow. Um, but yeah, you know, I, I have high standards for myself and for the team and, you know, we all hold each other to that high standard. Yeah, definitely. And I know you have a pretty strong work ethic. So what's kind of your training routine this summer, or, you know, even during the season, what does like, if you're on a diet, what does that look like? Like what's kind of your regiment right now? <clears throat> um, yeah, you know, I, I like to stay, um, on a pretty strict routine. Um, like summer is like the best time of the year. I mean, outside of the season, um, but like for like training purposes, like you got no classes. Um, it's really just like a full time job. Like this is all you're doing, like for the next couple months. Like um, so, you know, we're all really excited to get back and and get back into workouts. And, you know, we work out in the morning and then, you know, you do whatever, um, you know, uh, and then you come back and you run routes or you, you catch punts and you do extra stuff. Um, and it's kind of, it, it's fun. Like, um, you know, to someone else, it might sound like kind of boring or, you know, but like, this is what we're here for. Like spending all day, like at the building is like, it's something that we really enjoy. And I think that's special about our team this year. Like, um, you know, no one's like trying to get out of the building. Like, you know, everyone wants to be there as much as possible so they can get in um, as much work, work as they possibly can. Um, so yeah, like, this summer bro like and like eating like we we uh they feed us so well over at over at the facility like you don't gotta worry about anything we we got you know everything that we need um and you know i like to stay pretty healthy you know i don't i don't eat any junk food um so you know and they're so good with you know all our diets and our weights and everything it's just it makes it so easy um so yeah we're all excited to get back and and have this time away from, you know, classes just to kind of focus on, on, uh, on football. For sure. With you, I mean, with you being a guy who plays different roles and wears different hats on the team, do you focus more on like catching or do you fo like, what's kind of the thing you're working on right now? Footwork? Is it speed? Like what's kind of the areas that you're looking to like really focus on and really see strides and improvement throughout the summer? <clears throat> um, yeah, it's, I, you know, it is um, kind of tough to try to um, decide what I want to work on each day uh, just because, you know, I do want to develop so many areas in my game. Um, but, you know, like I said, we got so much time. So, like, for me especially, like, I want to work on, you know, my route running. You know, I haven't I haven't really played uh, a ton of offense in, in the past couple of years. Um, um, you know, last year I didn't I, – I got on the field a couple times the year before that. I had to sit out and – really the last time I was really out there in a game um, was when I was at Buffalo. Um, obviously I'm practicing, but, you know, I want to make sure, you know, um, I, I've improved in every, every aspect that I possibly can. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to go. So I think route running for me is, is a, a big emphasis, um, you know, timing, um, you know, making those, those, those big plays. 
Um, and we had plenty of time to work on that all summer. And then, like I said, with Tori, like me and Tori can go out, you know, whenever we want. And, you know, I can work on like being put in a, in a situation where I got to go run down a ball, like, um, or like come up on it. Um, and, you know, just, just having, you know, Tori, um, as my roommate and, you know, one of my good friends and teammates, like it, it's going to help so much. Yeah. Do you and your teammates or the special teams unit or wide receivers unit, like in practice or when you guys go out on your own, do you guys ever play games or like, com- like create your own types of competitions with each other? Like, are there any games or things you guys do to, you know, make it a little bit more competitive sometimes when you need that little extra boost when you guys are yeah. out there? Um, I think uh, the guys that we have in our room are just, you know, so like our room itself is like so goal oriented. Like we got guys that, you know, every day they want to compete and we have a really competitive um, receiver room. Um, so I don't, we don't really have any um, games per se, but we, we hold each other to such a high standard that like that within itself is almost a game, you know, like, um you know if you drop a ball you know like you got 15 push-ups or whatever um but like we we chart everything and you know everyone wants to have the best chart for that day and for for that you know training segment or whatever it is um so that within itself was kind of like our game um but yeah it's just like everyone holds himself to such a high standard and everyone holds the group um to a high standard that the competition in the room is already so high like everyone's pushing each other to go out there and um and play as well as they possibly can um so pra- practice is pretty you know pretty cool like you know obviously we have competition against the defense which is always fun um but yeah like within the room like we just are we're so goal oriented that that's kind of our game we, we all want to reach our goals it's awesome what's your favorite career moment so far at iowa and what do you look forward to this season like Is it, you know, running out on the field? Is it doing the, like, what's like the moment at Kinnick that you're like really excited for when the season starts again against Indiana? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so far, um, I I mean, I would probably have to say, um, the Michigan state game, um, for myself, uh, that punt return, um, you know, that, uh, I mean, like even without fans in Kinnick, like it was, it was such a crazy atmosphere, like, um, you know, my first touchdown in the stadium, my first touchdown at Iowa. Um, so, so for me, you know, that one's pretty special. And then, um, like I said earlier, like I've never played in front of a, a crowd this big. Um, and, you know, people are going to be eager to be back in, in, in the stadium after not being there for a whole year. Um, so really for me, you know, now that I'm a senior, you know, I'll be, I'll be in the front of that, um, of the line walking out. So like just walking into that atmosphere, after, you know, not having fans for so long, you know, in a big game, you know, every week's a big game, but a big game like Indiana week one um, for me, you know, that that's really what I'm looking forward to just being back out there, having everything be normal um, and just going and doing my thing. And, and plus another one, you know, um, we do get to play at Northwestern. I know we take every game, yeah. you know, one week at a time, but, you know, kind of coming back home, um, you know, all my friends are graduated now. Um, so they'll be in town. Uh, just kind of coming back close to home and playing, playing here um, for me is something I'm really looking forward to. That's awesome. With like, with some of these moments, like when you guys walk out onto the field, one thing I, I actually have never asked one of the Iowa football players this before. Do you guys talk while you're going out there? Like when you guys are in the line about to go out or is it not really talking just kind of in your own heads getting amped up? Like what's going on before you guys come out onto Kinnick? Um, yeah, uh, it's a really special moment. I mean, like, I, I still haven't done it. Um, I wasn't able to do it my first year because I was ineligible for transferring. Um, but last year, even with no fans, like, um, just like everyone, it's it's such a amazing tradition. Like, everyone kind of just, you know, and it, it is the beginning of the game. Everyone's kind of just, like, taking that, ho- that whole experience in. No one's really talking. Um, you know, we all hold hands. We're all, you know, one team running out there. Um, so it, it's really cool to be a part of. Um, you know, I, I mean, you kind of get goosebumps thinking about, um, like, coming out into a big stadium this year um, with, with it being packed. 
Um, so, no, no one's really talking. Everyone's kind of just, you know, getting ready for the game, um, you know, and just, just being a part of a, a, a great tradition that we have. So one thing I wanted to know too, we have a, I have a few random questions as well outside mm-hmm. of football questions. Is why did you pick number sixteen? Because I know you were seventeen at Buffalo. I heard right. you were seven in high school. So like, why sixteen? Right. Um, yeah. Well, uh, coming into uh, Iowa, I wanted to keep seventeen. Um, you know, I didn't really necessarily want seventeen at Buffalo either. I wanted to stick with my high school seven. Um, but it wasn't available. And then, you know, I got 17. It kind of grew on me. I played in it. Um, and then so I wanted to keep that. But I didn't even get a pick 16. 16 was given to me. Um, so, you know, um, and, and seven, obviously, Spencer has seven. Um, so, you know, 16 uh, was something that I chose. Um, but like 17, like, you know, it, I've played in it, you know, I've, I've already made memories in it, you know, um, so 16 is really growing on me. Um, and I don't think I'd switch it. Um, if I had a chance, uh, you know, I, I kind of, you know, want to make 16 my own, um, you know, and, and, and make 16 look good out there. Um, you know, it is a good number. Um, but yeah, it's definitely growing on me. Um, but yeah, it wasn't something that I chose, um, from the beginning. So no jersey change now that you're on scholarship. There's no chance of seeing a change before the season. Uh, even if I was given the opportunity, I don't. I don't think I'd change just just because you know. Um, I think you know it. It's something that you know it's, it's growing on me. I've already you know been out there. Um, you know, um, I, I don't think I'd want to switch it. I, I want to make it something you know that I'm proud of. Um, you know, I worked hard to, you know, get my way onto the field. And, you know, I'm, I was on the field a little bit last year. And, you know, I, with that number, I'm, I'm going to stick with with that number. Uh, out of the receiving room right now, uh, oh, everybody's uh, everybody's yeah. on an island. Who is winning the show Survivor? And who's the first one voted <laughs> off of the island? In the receiver room? Yeah. Well, I'm obviously going to take myself as winning, obviously. <laughs> um, like that. But I don't know. There, uh, That's a good question. We actually kind of talk about this sometimes, too. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I feel like we have a couple guys, like, who would avoid, you know, confrontation and uh, be strategic about it and, like, kind of just, like, be the last one standing without, like, ever uh, – like confronting who? anyone like i could who? see max Co- max cooper is my roommate um i could see coop uh being a, a sleeper in the uh in the survivor <laughs> game and and camping out and just out living everyone um but you know yeah we do talk about this all the time everyone everyone thinks it's himself um obviously you guys ever talk about who would win dancing with the stars <laughs> uh we have got a couple of dan- got a couple dancers oh who would who would win that yeah, uh, I, f- I feel like this is kind of going back to the celebration <laughs> question. I feel like you guys, are, you guys are getting me back on that one. We got some. I mean, Tyrone's a good dancer. Nico's a good dancer. Uh, Coop's a really good dancer. Who's the worst um, dancer? Yeah, who's who's the, worst? the worst? Yeah, man. Um, uh, you know, I'm not gonna lie. I'm a, I'm not a great dancer. Uh, that's why you will that's not a see me doing. Respectable pick. Yeah, you will not see me doing TikToks um, in the end zone or anything like that. Um, so, yeah, you know, I could definitely use a dance lesson or two. Fair. One thing I'm wondering is when you see on, like, social media and stuff, like, all of the Iowa, like, sports, like, Twitter, Instagram accounts and stuff, when they, like, post highlights of you guys or shout you out on Barstool, Iowa or something like that, like – how, like, is it talked about in the locker room? Like, do you guys talk about the mentions and all that, or is it just something that gets kind of blocked out? Like, like uh, from like Hawkeye football itself, or like yeah. just from all of them? No, from like all the random accounts and stuff that are like followed by Hawkeye fans, like the fan accounts and all that type of stuff. Oh yeah, no. Um, if it's not, if it's not like uh, through the Hawkeye page, like. Obviously, like if someone's posted on the Hawkeye page, you know, we'll see that you'll we'll be in the locker room and we'll be like, oh, that was sweet or whatever. Or like Tyrone was on um, 
Instagram live, you know, that was pretty cool. Um, but other than that, like if it's some, you know, random account, um, posting, I, I feel like we're pretty good about kind of staying out, um, of the, of that kind of stuff, you know, good or bad, you know, whatever, yeah. whatever is being said, um, just cause you know, you, you don't want to get, get into your head, like both in a positive or negative way. Um, so I feel like we're pretty good about that. So if it's not like, you know, Hawkeye football, um, then I feel like guys, you know, I'm talking more about like comments, um, oh, okay. or stuff like that, yeah. but like, yeah, if, if, you know, obviously it's when, when something's posted about you or your teammates, um, like a highlight or something like that, that's, that's always cool. But yeah, other than that, we, we try to stay out of it. What's your favorite Iowa city restaurant? Oof. What's your go-to? Okay, well, my go-to and my favorite are, are probably different. My okay. go-to is, like, I'm either at Chipotle or I'm going to be at Bread Garden. Like, those are my, like, go-to. Like, if we have Black Card, like, I'm going to Chipotle or I'm going to Bread <laughs> Garden. Like, um, but my favorite, that's even tough. Um, God, I don't know. I, uh, I like pasta, like. Oh, I think I think sitting I think sitting outside with you know a couple of the guys at Boston is like, or Stella. I'm at Stella a lot. So I I love Boston too. I agree. But the place that gets hyped to me that I hear stories about all the time that I've been wanting to try, I still haven't gone, is Monica's. Oh, I, I, I was told, kind of expecting I told the Monica. Tommy about Monica's. I told yeah, Tommy about. Monica's. I always hear about Monica's. I hear how great it is. How there's Where's a million Monica's? things on the menu. It's also hyped, and I've never been still. Where is it? Monica's? Is by like the Walgreens out by like the uh, what are those softball fields? Yeah. Oh okay. yeah, yeah. Oh okay. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's out there. Um, so Boston Monica's over Monica's. Okay. Well, well, it's like down. I'm talking like the whole you okay, know, you're, vibes, you're, you know. Okay. Yeah, but Monica's, dude, Monica's is a sleeper. I feel like not many people know about it. Um, What's the go-to go at there. Monica's? I get the Bucatini Broccolini. That's just me, though. So don't hate on it. It's got a funky name. Yeah, what is it? Um, <laughs> it's a little bit on the healthier side. Um, but, no, I mean, their pasta is great, dude. Um we uh we go there all the time. It's, it's uh, with one of the places we have for uh, black card, um. So we go there. Um, but yeah, it's a sleeper. Not many people know about it. If you haven't been, you definitely gotta go. I gotta go. Is there any? So let's let's say another hypothetical because I love these. Is there any DB that you could lock up while you're playing DB and you're a <laughs> receiver? Oh, man, you're asking the tough questions. Um, <laughs> Only the best questions. I don't know, man. I mean, like, I don't know. Our DBs are, are pretty athletic, and I have not played DB in forever. Um, I, <laughs> I'm not going to – I'm not going to single anyone out, but, you know, maybe in, like, a, I, I – I don't know. I honestly. How about don't you know. don't say a name? How about you give a number? No, I can't do that. Either. <laughs> That's even worse. <laughs> uh, no, I don't know, bro. I haven't played DB in in so long. Like, geez, I I, I don't even want to try. To be honest, <laughs> that was something that we uh, I remember doing in high school to like keep things light during our like doubles hell week or whatever we didn't even do doubles it was just like a longer practice they would at the end of practice to see if offense or defense would condition more they put the offense on defense and the defense on offense and see who's like the better athlete and they had yeah. like they had me like the old lineman running routes against the d lineman it was absolutely electric i had no yeah. idea if iowa ever like did something like that uh during their summer camp just to try and keep things spiced up but when you're when you're not doing football training returning punts from tory whatever what do you do to like stay loose have fun keep your mind off the game when it's a little too much uh yeah no um we uh i mean we got a our team is, you know, we're all really close. So we tend to spend a ton of time with each other outside, um, outside the facility, uh, just kind of hanging out. Um, you know, a lot of guys will go golfing, you know, I'm, I'm not the best golfer at all. So I don't, 
I don't, uh, I don't golf. Um, but no, we'll go out to eat. We'll, uh, uh, my house, um, we watch a lot of movies. Uh, me and Tori are, are making our way through, uh, we got a list. Um, so, so we, we sit down and we watch a lot of movies, you know, what's the, what's the most out. recent one? What's the most recent movie you've seen? We were, uh, we recently just watched all the Taken movies. Which so one I was your t- favorite? Um, cause I, I know all of them pretty well off the top of my head. I think I just got to go with the first one. Yeah. Honest. Yeah. I mean, that's, um, that's the easy answer. I'd agree with that though. Yeah. Uh, but no, th- those are all good movies. Um, but yeah, other than that, like, you know, we just, you know, hang out. We'll, uh, we'll, uh, play some, uh, spike ball or something, you know, we're just, you know, regular guys just, you know, yeah. enjoying, um, enjoying our time uh that we have um but yeah everyone's super close um so so we we pretty much spend a lot of time with each other outside the building nice yeah jack we could do a segment on the pod charlie's movie reviews as it as he binges oh, the movies, we could get the reviews from yeah. Fuck yeah. i would love to bro we were we we watched like in the beginning of the semester when school wasn't really um wasn't really picking up we were we were watching so many movies um uh, then, then we started having to buckle down on school a little bit. Um, we could definitely get that going. Yeah, I, I honestly have not seen a good movie in a while. And that's my own fault. I have terrible patience. Like, I just cannot get myself to sit down and watch a movie. Dude, I've been the movie. same. I've been the same. What do you do? Like, how do you how do you get yourself to do it? Because I straight <laughs> up just I, – I really – no, for real. Like, I just I, – I know you're for it. real. Well, it's easy. Like after like a, oh, yeah, a easy. long day at being at the facility, like um, typically me and Tori will you know, will have either dinner or we'll make dinner, um, and we'll just sit down while we're eating um, and watch a movie. All right. And then so you know I'll, we I'll go just to walk on and get a really long hard day, and I'll just start doing that. Right. And, and then movies. just you know come on over and watch a movie. Um, yes. Yeah. Charlie's basically saying, Jack play football at Iowa, you'll yeah. get tired yeah. out after practice and then you can watch a movie. <laughs> you'll be a huge right, movie right. Guy. No, but I get it. Like at home, like I haven't watched a single movie or show. Like no. And like it's just it is kind of tough to sit there for a couple hours and just watch a movie. Sometimes. What's your what's your favorite genre of movie? Comedy, scary movie, action? I do and like and and your movies. and your favorite actor, your go to that you just you watch any movie he's in. Oh, Leo, bro. Uh, he's the man. I would watch yeah. any movie he's ever been in. There's no like, bad Leo movie. No bad Leo movie. Um, but I don't know. It, it's pretty close between comedy and uh, action. Um, depends on the mood I'm in. Um, you know, if I don't really want to pay attention, then it's kind of like a comedy. Um, but if, you know, I'm sit, if I'm there to watch a movie and I'm locked in, it's going to be probably action. So it's like Deadpool, your happy median? medium that, that is a yeah, yeah that is a good one um, yeah that, that's those a are great to. movies that's a good yeah. too so i yeah. got two final questions one of them is i'm going to chicago later this summer i heard you would give a great breakfast place recommendation i've been given two and you're supposed to choose the place i have heard that sarkis is a place sarkis. to go and walker yep. brothers which one do you oh pick? dude if i had to pick I mean, I'm assuming you got these from Tommy. Uh, Might have been a source. If if I had to pick between those two, I would go Walker Brothers. I think they oh. have. Yeah, yeah. Okay. No. Um, I well, like, uh, I don't know. I actually, I'm gonna give a third one. If you should go to Upper Crust before you go to Walker Brothers or you okay. go to Sarkis, um, you can't go wrong between the three of them. But out of your two, I would go to Walker Brothers. It's more of like a, like you'll probably get like pancakes or you get something like along that line. If you go to Sarkis, you're going to get like the bacon Loretta. Like, I don't even know if anyone else orders anything else there. What's a oh, bacon so there's Loretta? only, so there's only like one go to at Sarkis compared no, to, they got like a whole menu, but like people, yeah, like, yeah, but people you, you go, go there for that one thing. You go, okay. there for the bacon Loretta. what's this, yeah. what's this bacon Great Loretta? Rack. What even is it? It's like a, a French bread like toasted french bread with like bacon and then they got like onions and like cheese i honestly don't even know the rest that's in there i get the ham loretta um so it is a little bit different when i order that but um i haven't been to sarkis in a while actually that that does sound good 
My final question for you, and we ask all of our Iowa athletes this question, is what does being a Hawkeye mean to you through your career so far and onward? Um, that's a great question. Um, yeah, uh, it, it's such a, like, dude, it's such an honor to be a Hawkeye, like, for real. Like, there's such a support, like, throughout all of Iowa City. Like, um, you know, people really, like, take their um, – Iowa football seriously um and it's just such a great community um uh, you know and, and there's such a tradition and like you know our coaches have been there you know forever and you, you don't really get to see that a lot in college football or, or really anywhere um and and we take pride in being a family and I, I think that's like the biggest thing like um you know family like and tradition like guys you know passing on the jersey leaving the jersey in a better place than they found it um, you know, and, 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 and people really take it seriously. Like you go out and like, people like know who you are. Like it, it, it's crazy. It's, it, it's, uh, um, something that's really, really cool and really special to be a part of. Um, and I'm excited to, uh, to finally have everyone back, um, in Kinnick and, you know, it's going to be a great year and I'm, I'm, I'm just really excited to be able to <clears throat> be out there and be in that uniform and, you know, be a part of uh, such a great, um, program. All right, so final, final question. Uh, go to Chicago Pizza Place. That's tough because I feel like I should say um, Lou Malnati's because that's, like, what everyone wants. But I kind of like Barnaby's. Like, yes, Barnaby's. I, I was hoping he'd say that. Yeah, like, okay, Lou Malnati's. Lou Malnati's is good. Um, but I don't really like deep dish. So, like, okay. Okay. if – if I'm eating a pizza, like, which, you know, I don't really have anymore, but, you know, I'm I'm going to Barnaby's for that go thin, Barnaby's. thin crust. Oh, nothing better than Barnaby's. All right. I'm yeah. going to have to try Barnaby's. I've never had it. So. Oh, dude, it's, it's the best. All right. Well, then we'll close it up right here. Charlie, thank you so much for coming on and talking. I'm sure a lot of Hawkeye Nation is going to appreciate hearing a lot about you, your journey and all of that. So. Uh, like always, guys, not the same time, same place. We will see you guys later.